Hello everyone and welcome to Poirier's Cricket where we help cricketers like yourself get stronger and fitter with the aim for you to take your cricket to the next level. We try to provide you with the information that professional cricketers do outside of their cricket training so you can implement it into your training and hopefully go from your club cricketer upper level or whether you're a young player coming through the sport and looking to get into those academies so you can get to the top level of the game. That being said, you do not need to be a professional cricketer at all to do this session. These exercises are simple as they get and you'll be able to do them at your local gym or if you're lucky enough to have a gym at your home, you'll be able to do this anywhere you want. So today we're going to be doing a power session and we're going to be doing four exercises which hits all aspects of that strength speed curve. So we're going to be starting uh, with our strength exercise where we're going to do five sets of three reps. So everything's going to be low reps here, but with maximum intention. Uh, and that is the main, I'll say it now, that's sort of the main sort of aspect of this training, of power training. You have to hit everything with that maximum intention to get the most out of it. Um, so we'll be doing that with our strength exercises. The velocity is going to be fairly low, but the weight is going to be high. Then as we come down to our strength speed exercise, the velocity is going to be going up and the resistance is going to be coming down a touch. And then as, for, as we go down into our other exercises, speed strength and absolute speed, resistance is going to keep coming down, but the velocity and speed is going to get higher. So as being said, let's start and jump into the session. For the first exercise, we are going to be doing a back squat. And I said we're going to be doing five sets of three. So it's going to be fairly heavy for you, probably around 85 to 90% if you've ever done sort of like a one rep max back squat test. Um, so that's going to be up there. Uh, I've already been sort of through a little bit of a warm up for me, so I won't show you. It was a bit, obviously a bit boring. Don't want to bore you too much. But what it was basically was a couple of minutes on the bike just to get a bit of blood flowing and then a bit of uh, mobility for me, um, looking at a bit of tightness around the hips and ankles. Um, and that is it then. And I'll be jumping now straight on the bar and making my way up through the weights until I'm around about my working weight. And then the sets will start from there. So I've done a few at the empty bar. Now I'll do a few at about 60K and then I'll probably take like 20 kilo jumps until I'm at about the weight that I want to be for the session, which will probably be around, depends how I feel, maybe like 110, 120. Um, and then I'll be hitting, and then from there I'll be hitting the five sets um, with about three to four minutes rest. So rest is really important. Make sure you're getting all that rest. So you, as I said, and I'll say it again, I'll probably keep saying it, as I go through this video, so you're hitting, hitting, hitting every uh, set with that maximal intention. So I'll get through the first set now and then probably check back in with you, see how it went, and maybe give you a few tips on hitting the back squat. So that was right for me, felt good. Might go up next set. So might stay there. That was a good first set. With these, don't be afraid to sort of, as you go, change your weight, especially if it's the first time you're doing it. If you've done a session before and you know what your weights are, you wanna make like nice progressions as you go, go ahead and do that by all means. But um, I haven't done this. I haven't done like a good strength cycle in a while, so sort of finding my feet with the weights a bit. So that accounts my first set, because that was there, they're about fairly slow moving, as you could probably tell. Um, but that is what we're looking for on this strength piece. And hopefully as we go through the movements, um, you'll be able to see my velocity increasing from that. But yeah, um, just a bit of a tip when you're back squatting. If you've got your, if you've probably heard me, lovely sound I know but taking a really deep breath before I unrack the bar so what you're gonna to want to do is sort of brace breathe as if you're pushing your belly button out and that'll give you like you'll feel it like a really nice core a tight core which hopefully make you feel a bit more solid under that bar um, really good tip as well probably made me probably sounded a bit weird when I breathe in so breathing in like I was breathing through a straw and that for me allows me to brace really well, 
before I'd feel it, like I'd take a deep breath. Sometimes I'd feel strong, sometimes I wouldn't. I always found that really weird, but I saw that tip once. I can't remember who said it. Um, but to breathe in, I could breathe in through a straw. And from then I've hit it like, feel strong, strong brace every rep. So try that, see how you get on with it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna hit the other sets now, the four sets left. Um, I'll show you another one probably from like a side angle now, just so you can see what that looks like and then you can probably compare it against your own videos, whatever, um, whatever you need to do. But I will crack on with that. So for the back squats done, that's our strength piece done, and now our strength speed, strength speed exercise. Sort of changing it up, but not changing it up that much. So we are still gonna back squat, and this is what I mean, and this is a really good example of working at different velocities, different resistances. So technically you can work um, different components of your strength speed curve um, with the same exercise which is ideal, maybe a bit boring, but this is a great example just to show you um, how you can do it. Um, I've got, I'm gonna do other videos of this use anyway, so we've got four full days, and I will show you in them different exercises that you can use. So you can just do what you want, really. Um, if you enjoy doing different things, carry on. If you just wanna stick here, say you've got a bar in the gym, and you're like, oh, yeah, but there's nowhere to, I don't know, for instance, like power clean or something, or someone else is power cleaning. This is a great alternative for that. And it is actually a bit simpler. So what we're gonna do is jump squat. Now, this may look a little, probably think like, oh, watch your back, or so you don't get injured. It's fine. <laughs> I've done this years and years and years. Um, and tried different weights with it. Um, take your time with it, you're not, it doesn't cause injuries unless you're being really stupid with it. Um, but that can be said for any exercise that you're gonna do in the gym. So. The weight's gonna drop now, I'm gonna be working about like 60, 70% of my back squat. Um, for me, that is about 100 kilos. And we're gonna do again, three, well, not again, three sets of three reps. Um, again, it's explosive every rep, just trying to get off the ground as much as you can. That might not mean, you know, if you're not comfortable coming off the ground, just means getting up on your toes, getting that full extension through your ankles, your knees and your hips, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna try get off the floor slightly, but you'll probably see as I go through the reps, you know, on the last one, I might not quite get off the floor as much as I did on my first rep. But that is fine. We expect the velocity to drop off a bit with fatigue. Um, that being said, if you are doing this for the first time, start with an empty bar and go up in like 10, 20 kilo jumps to around a weight that you sort of feel comfortable doing it and then go from there. Um, just make sure you're Everything's exploding up and then just landing nice and solid on your feet. Really catching the bar, expect it to be weights, expect it to be a bit heavy, you know, don't weight on your back at the end of the day. Just stay tight and everything will be fine. So I'm gonna show you now, I'll show you again, show you the first set and just some things, some pointers on it, which sort of goes through my head when I do this sort of stuff. And then I'll show you the side angle as well. So let's get to it. Yeah, slightly out of breath, obviously. But yeah, expect that. For those low reps, it's quite hard work. So now, get your rest in, get three, four minutes resting again. And go again, three sets, it's fine, it's more than enough. Intent is just the key here. Everything I'm gonna say now, it's obviously intent, 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 I know it's gonna get boring, but that is so key to this sort of stuff. So what was I doing there? Um, bracing again, as I was coming out of the rack. Uh, sort of controlled on the way down, maybe in like a two second centric, but just controlling the weight on the way down and exploding from the bottom, 
same depth as my back squat was, um, and then sort of aiming to push my sort of like curl in my head, so up and back slightly, and that means my drive is just nice and straight. My legs popping at the top, just get a little bit of air, and then a nice solid catch with slightly bent knees. Um, but that is that. I'll show you now from the side angle. Um, and let's get to it. So that was our strength speed exercise done. I could keep squatting, I could keep using the jump squat if I wanted to be incredibly boring, um, but I'm not. So if you were to use a jump squat again, weight comes down probably about to like 40 odd percent, 30 percent, and you could do jump squats again, but you're going to be working at a higher velocity. So that's why the intent is so important. So if you're half assing this, you wouldn't be hitting these different aspects of your strength speed curve. Um, so everything just needs to be done with that maximum intent, again. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna change it up a bit. So what we're gonna do is a med ball throw with a bit of a rotation in it. So we're gonna be doing a standing med ball throw. You can do different versions of this, like a kneeling or a half kneeling version, which sort of take your hips out of it and then it's pure like trunk rotation but we're sort of doing like more of a lower body day today. So we're going to do the standing version, which allows our hips to come through and get involved in that rotation, very much like you do with cricket shots. Um, so when you're sort of going through these um, cycles, make sure you're doing sort of rotation work like this, whether it's these or landmine rotations, like that rotation aspect is so big in cricket. I go, I have said that I don't like really sport specific exercises. I think the stuff that people do in the gym is done for a reason. It's the most efficient way to get strong and powerful. But that doesn't mean getting strong and powerful in every sort of plane of movement that we need to. So it's important, you know, rotations sometimes are heavily missed out in people's um, training. So just make sure you get shit like that in. Um, and it's gonna be like, if you just think about like rotation, like the way, you know, you play most of your cricket shots, even like, you know, every shot in the leg side is gonna involve some sort of rotation from your trunk and your hips. And then even, you know, even cover driving, um, when you're following through, you know, hips coming through again, they're big drivers of power, power in a lot of cricket shots. And then coming through shots on the offside, you know, all the way through to your cut. Um, and then probably the only shot that doesn't really use any sort of rotation is probably like a little little glance um, through the third man. We don't really need much power anyway. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do, rotational med ball throw. I'll go through that again now. We're gonna do three reps on each side. Very important again to do these on each side. So I said, okay, we only do it one way in cricket and that's fine, but we, we're gonna do that so heavily anyway in our cricket training. We don't want to create even more of a, what's the word, sort of compensation on one side, like heavily working one side and not the other, because that's then going to cause injuries. Um, big cause of injuries, having imbalances in your body. So when we're in the gym, we want to do everything both sides, whether that's, you know, your single leg work, if you think about it, oh, this is how I do it on a cricket field, you know, we're not in the cricket, we're not on, in the cricket field, we're not on the cricket field in the gym. We're just trying to create the most athletic um, person um, as we possibly can. And that involves doing everything on both sides and you, know, and you don't want to be injured because that means you won't be playing cricket, um, which is completely defeats the whole object of everything that we're doing. Right, so I'm going to jump into this now. Again, I'll probably try to show you two angles um, and then just some things that I am thinking of when I'm doing these. So let's get into it.
Right. So, that's a weird angle. Yeah, so that's just a bit of a working example for you. Again, it's quite easy to sort of half ass these, probably especially if there's people <laughs> around you and they're probably looking at you because you're making so much noise. Just try and ignore them and just throw the ball as hard as you can. I've got a little bit of padding against the wall, so it just saves the equipment a bit. Um, and you'll probably make the gym owner very happy that you are doing so. So try and do that if you can. Um, it's not really going to damage the equipment that much anyway. Um, it's just good to have that thought. As you probably see there, I'm twisting a little bit on my outside foot, so the foot furthest away from the wall. And that's just allowing the hips to come through. So that's what you want. Don't sort of fix your feet in a certain position because that is then not going to allow your um, hips to get involved. Um, which we are sort of going for here. We will do sort of a, a non-hippie version more on an upper body day when we just want that trunk rotation. So I'll show you another set now. Um, I could probably just show you the same angle actually. Doubt there'll be much use me showing you a different angle. Um, but yeah, let's do dimension sets. Same rest, three to four minutes. Three sets, three reps each side. Right, so that was our speed strength work done. And now we're gonna move on to our absolute speed work. So what we're gonna do now is a box jump and just a few sort of pointers on this. Um, you see a lot of people doing, or can do like really high box jumps, um, which is great. Um, but we're just gonna do something today on a 20 inch box, so not too high. And if you need to go <laughs> lower, the aim is just to get as high as you can in that initial jump and then probably try and land with as straight as legs as you can. Probably good if it's slightly bent, you're probably working on like that is the right range for you. It's just with so why we're doing it, it's just we want to focus really on getting as much power and height as we can. That is the main purpose of this. When people do really high box jumps, now the box is stacked up, sort of comes into a bit more of a challenge with hip mobility rather than uh, how much power you have in your legs. So it's just, you know, how high you get your, how low you can get in a squat, how high you can get your knees, and, you know, how that will mean you can get on a higher box, for instance, rather than jumping as high as you can. So I don't know if you can see the box. You'll be able to see the box when I do the jump. Um, so just quite a low, low uh, box. We're going to go for five reps. Um, we can do a bit more reps with this because we shouldn't get as fatigued as we did with all the other works. The resistance is so low, which work with our body weight. Um, so again, we're going to do three sets of five reps. I'll show you a couple of angles with this now. Um, and then this will be our last exercise. So yeah, don't mind a little bit of an arm swing in it, it's fine. Um, but as you could probably see there, I was catching it. You know, I could go on a higher box if I was going to catch it with in a slightly lower squat, but there's no point. Uh, so I'm just going to keep working with this size box. Good catch, trying to get my legs as straight as I could without kicking the box. So just be careful with that. Um, so I'll show you now once more from like a side angle, what that looks like, and then we are done. Um, so I'm going to do four full days um, of this sort of power training. We do, when we do our power cycles in our Proteus programming, we do four gym sessions, because um, we do this mainly in the off season. And we do a little bit of this sort of training in season, but in a slightly different manner, which I will go through in another series, which I'll do after this. But yeah, if you want sort of some more tips in starting out with your strength and conditioning work, we have a free ebook. 
So if you want to check that out, that'll be in the description below. And if you want to see any of our programs which involve sort of training like this, um, but we will program it for you through your entire cricket season, including the off-season, um, pre-season and your in-season training. Um, so we'll do that day by day for you. Um, so go and check those out if you want and subscribe if you want to check out the rest of this series. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cut out my phone over. You can see it.